about 8 to 10 percent of patients with metastatic colorectal cancer have a BRAF V600E mutation. This actually portends for a very poor prognosis. Typically, the survivals are about half that of BRAF wild type patients. So we need to find other treatment options for these patients with BRAF mutated disease. Patients with BRAF mutated colorectal cancer don't tend to respond like patients with BRAF mutated melanoma to BRAF inhibitors. There was really amazing scientific work done that showed that in colon cancer in particular, when you give a BRAF inhibitor or you inhibit this pathway, you get a reflexive upregulation of the EGFR inhibitor, of the EGFR receptor. So if we give a combination of an EGFR inhibitor or an EGFR antibody plus a BRAF inhibitor or an EGFR inhibitor plus a BRAF inhibitor plus a MEK inhibitor to double hit the pathway, we've seen much better efficacy. So the Beacon study is a study that's looking at bringing essentially uh, a new standard into patients with metastatic colorectal cancer, specifically those with RAS wild type but BRAF V600E mutations. Those patients do incredibly bad. I mean, their prognosis is, is, is terrible. And in colon cancer, their median survival is about 10, 12 months, which is uh, no better than historical five of you for the general population. Uh, for first line, usually we go with fulfoxiri, bevacizumab, and when we get to second line, we don't have options, much options for these patients. I mean, of course, we can go to regorafen or test one or two, but rarely, rarely salvaging patients in that setting. Um, and one of the challenges, these are tumors that are EGFR, uh, I'm sorry, that are, that are resistant to EGFR inhibitors typically. They don't respond to one and uh, uh, they, uh, they tend to have poor response across the board for, uh, for chemotherapy as well. Initial uh, targeting of the tumor started with RAF inhibitors, with vimurafimib and the likes, uh, and corafinib and others. The problem, the problem was that the response rate was less than 5%. In melanoma, uh, to contrast that, in presence of BRAF V600E, if you use these RAF inhibitors, you have 70% response rate. So the understanding wa was that there's something else driving that tumor when you block RAF. And when you look upstream again, you look at EGFR. EGFR, because of the loop uh, mechanism, becomes relevant again and, s and suddenly takes over. And so it made a lot of sense actually to block EGFR along with, uh, with, with, with RAF. Uh, so here's a disease that doesn't respond to EGFR inhibitors. When you block RAF, now you can block EGFR and induce a response when you do dual blockade. Then comes the MEC, and MEC is downstream from BRAF. So some goes upstream, some goes downstream, and so the triplet essentially blocks every aspect of that, of that pathway, and so it makes sense to actually add the three. Interestingly, when you actually have each one of them, you have more toxicities than when you have all three. There's some protective mechanisms in the skin and the bowels actually that prevent some of the toxicities we traditionally see with these agents. So it ends up being actually a little bit safer uh, than expected at least. Um, the, the study that was done uh, in, this, in this setting, uh, the Beacon trial that's looking at the triplet versus actually a doublet versus uh, chemotherapy plus cetuximab as the control arm is ongoing. Uh, the study actually closed in the United States uh, because essentially in the United States, the NCCN guidelines allow us to use a regimen that includes a RAF inhibitor, which made, made it very difficult to accrue, unfortunately, on this study. A little bit of a disservice to this study. Uh, in the rest of the world, the study is ongoing. But there was an initial study with, with uh, about 30 plus patients that looked at the three drugs, the triplet, encorafenib, binametinib, and, and cetuximab, that was presented uh, uh, and it was the safety uh, lead-in into the Beacon study and it showed a response rate of 40 percent with a triplet including uh, uh, two to three CRs, complete responders in a disease where you expect zero and uh, some of these responses were quite deep and quite significant. So that led to the breakthrough uh, uh, application through the FDA and hopefully we'll make this ultimately available to our patients, uh, especially again that we're talking about a patient population that has no options whatsoever uh, following first-line treatment failure. Now, 
uh, when we look at the worldwide access to these drugs, it's, it's unlikely to be at this or come at the same rate that it comes in the U.S. So the Beacon trial will give us the final answer about two things. One is the three, the three drugs uh, uh, regimen going to be superior to standard chemotherapy? And if I was a guessing man, I'd say yes. Uh, then the next question is, do we really need three drugs? Can we go away with two drugs? And that we'll see. That is probably the more interesting question from this study. In terms of our patients right now, we have uh, a regimen available to our patients, and we'll have hopefully another regimen with these three drugs, which would be my preferred option for my patients if it becomes available to the clinic. Uh, and that, that would be a good salvage regimen for patients with BRAF V600E mutations.